Sup everybody, this is Carrick with ACG, and as always, it's my continuing space mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new titles and new series creations, and to boldly go where no one, but usually the devs, have gone before. Okay, I'm not even trying it. You know, it is nice to see space games on a resurgence. Really not since the seminal titles of Privateer and Freelancer and Wing Commander and Free Space have so many gamers wanted to jump into the cockpits of dubiously designed spaceships separating themselves from the cold embrace of frozen Pop-Tart deaths by less than an inch of plastisteel and metal. And many titles have been excellent, especially lately, including Elite and No Man's Sky after like 40 updates. And today we're going hurtling into deep space with another one, something a bit more casual for those who don't want to get into the more detailed takes that some of these other titles offer. And that's Rebel Galaxy Outlaw, the prequel to Rebel Galaxy. Now, Rebel Galaxy Outlaw is out tomorrow for PC on the Epic Store and on PS4 and Switch at a later time. It costs 30 bucks and it's made by Double Damage Games. It's been in early access for streaming for about two weeks, but as of now, it is patched up to 1.0. Let's see if its final space shoot and loot scootin' form is worth anything. As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's my review for Rebel Galaxy Outlaw, the most beat up private space station ever, bucklet rogers, and barrel rolls. Lots and lots and lots and lots of barrel rolls. Graphics are gonna be up first. Despite a very few number of missteps, Rebel Galaxy Outlaw never really ceases to offer some moment of glory, from the smaller affairs of the solar systems you firefly your way through, to the bevy of smaller planets and space stations and pirate booty bays, casinos and spaceships, both large and small. Running on the Ogre 3D game engine, the game actually looks very good. There's excellent visual flares like the dirty marks on a spaceship window when the light hits it just right, or moments when you come into or out of systems, or warp that adds a very cinematic touch to it. Actually, who am I kidding? It straight up copies everything cinematic about Firefly and then just adds on to it, and I like that. Starships twist in useless barrel rolls as they proceed to jump from place to place to place to place, or scoop box it into a space station bay at speeds that would get Maverick busted. For a lower budget title, that freeform feeling really works. I dig it. The damage effects across the ship bow look really good where slugs have sliced across the metal or any of the ammo using weapons dropping shells into space as you fire them. There's a lot of small visual flares here that elevate the entire package. The weapon effects themselves run from okay to excellent, but man, some of the weapons are plinkers. Like you're just freezing hot dogs and throwing it at a car door and hoping it does something other than making a donk sound when it hits. All kidding aside, most are actually cool. I mean, it's got a Robotech-like swarm missile that spins out of their shackles and twists around before hitting the enemies. Not because it actually makes them any better, but because it looks cool. Texture and detail work are pretty good from ships to space stations. However, I really do have to discuss the cockpits for a second. In their defense, many of them reflect the idea that putting a big sheet of glass in front of your face while flying a ship at light speed is on par with the third generation RX-7 originally having its filter behind the rear suspension. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go look it up. So it makes sense to not surround yourself with it. But some of them are just really, really claustrophobic. Listen, it's a design decision and it fits the more cumbersome look to some of the ships that would rightly just be named Space Horker. But combined with the game's uniquely DOS looking dashboards in some of these ships, it never really did look right for me. The game also offers easily one of the most detailed ship painters I've ever seen. It's almost completely full-fledged, meaning you can do anything from high-detail paintings or just import a picture into the game and stamp it onto the side of your spaceship. So the game's TTPOS, or time to penises on ships, is probably going to be insanely low. Now, one thing to remember is this doesn't have capital ships in it. They're not flyable, like the prior title. These are solidly one-man affairs, though you do have battles against much larger ships in it. Performance-wise, the game runs spectacularly well, with a current i7 at 4.6 and a 2080 Ti, 4K at well over 100 FPS is the norm with every setting on its highest. If you have a 1070 or lower, you'll still see reflective performance at 1080p resolution on here. You're going to get good frame rates with anything that's a generation or two or even three ago. It doesn't have an incredible amount of options for graphics, though. It does allow you to separate the effects from the quality settings, which is really nice, especially if you want to get a couple extra FPS when it's impacting you on a lower end system, but overall, very good performance, low to high. As a package, Rebel Galaxy really does look good. It runs very well, and while it's not the most flexible of game designs, it has a very do what you can do with what you have mentality to it, and then runs an incredible amount of polish over the top of that, and I really do like its appearance. Sound, 
music, and voice. Look, I have grown understandably weary of my brother's attempts to cut me off from the family business, so it's time to do what any good entrepreneur does and start my own. Well, this should be good. Rick. Rebel Galaxy. We got to do music first. There's just something about the original game's music score that worked so well. And here in Galaxy Outlaw, they double down or maybe even quadruple, possibly even decuple. Different radio stations offer different types of music and a ton of licensed tracks with vocals. If you're playing this to get your space cowboy on, this is probably the game for you. It also allows for custom music paths so that you can use your own music on your PC. It's really a highlight of the game, especially when you're mining rocks from bigger rocks and you're out there for maybe 40 minutes filling up some never-ending belly of a ship with cargo extenders and you get to listen to that. It's excellent music throughout from a number of genres. That brings us to sound. And sound is good. There's a high fidelity to most of the sounds and a good separation and 3D effects and acoustic flair here and there as well as processing. Like the thud of ejected pilots' bodies off your front window when you go to rescue them from deep space but somehow hit the reverse thrusters button a bit too slow and you hard smash into them. Or a missile impacting the back of the more Euro model looking fighters that you can get. I'm not going to lie, there are a couple of the weapons that I stated before just don't have the impact I would like. That's the game going for a bit more of a realistic tone though than it is really an actual issue with the sounds overall pretty good voice this is actually very well done while the lip syncing is incredibly bad with most of the characters looking like someone replaced their lips with the forearms of a linebacker and we're told to just flap them around as the sound samples played the end result though is excellent with juno yes another freelancer callback doing a good job as she tries to figure out who killed her husband as well as the later characters you meet a couple of which will give you missions or can even be called over to help you in a battle having pretty good voices Overall, I liked it. Gameplay and a bit about the story. Now, Rebel Galaxy Outlaw Sea Spacer Juno tracking down a killer across a large sector of space through anomalies and into a number of planetary systems. To do so, you fly around the various locations, scout out information about the murder, as well as performing side missions and just exploring for the fun of it to gear up your ships or to buy new ones, buy your own space station and much more before taking out the big baddie themselves. While the game does have a story, it does reward exploration as well as just tinkering around, so you don't have to actually mainline the story. To start off the game, you choose a difficulty, which this adjusts what you start with. For example, on the hardest difficulty, you start with the same ship that would only be loosely called space capable anyway. You're outfitted with a cat laser toy for a weapon and what equates to like a black and white non-color guided radar system, which is about as useful as just sticking your head outside and yelling, are you a bad guy to everybody around you? Once you decide you're off to the races, the game gives you the freedom pretty quickly to do a lot of stuff, which is both its strength and a bit of a stumbling block if you're not a custom to these games. At the start, you can fly from planet to planet in the first system until you buy a jump drive for one of your ships, which then allows you to jump to the 30 plus planetary systems, each that offers its own unique locations and presentation. Now, some systems are near decaying stars, others deep in pirate territory, but all of them have possible routes to make cash. And you can also join a merchant's guild and a mercenary's guild, offering even more diverse ways to make money with the caveat of possibly pissing off the other groups involved. So if you want to just be the space version of Edward Norton and just be a complete jackass everyone you can you can shoot it up you can take enemies ejected pilots and sell them into slavery you can run black market alien heavy metal albums through police space feel free to do all that but if you do the space law is not going to like it and your relationship with them will go down over time just like they can go up or down for the pirates all systems also have a general threat level and you can see if they're patrolled heavily or not which helps making black market runs increase your profit at most stations, there's a couple people to talk to, ship dealers, equipment dealers, bartenders who will sell you data about what's going on in the system, and a number of smaller mini games like pool and slots you can play if you just want to take a rest and enjoy the scenery. Whether you decide to hinge more on the Han Solo side or the Starbucks side, really it will depend on the ship you choose, and this is where equipment itself is so important many times, almost regardless of the ship itself. When you're at an equipment station, you have weapons, defense, components, flare, and surplus as your categories. The last two being trinkets you buy for the cockpit and leftover items, so we'll ignore those for now. 
Weapons run the gamut from laser-based, ion guns, gauss guns, mass drivers, and so on, with weapons being able to be matched into spots on whatever ship you have. Defense allows for adding more armor, ECMs, as well as extra shielding, while components run across an array of better afterburners, better ship generators to power weapons, extra storage in the black market storage area, and more. Now, when it comes to the generator, that's pretty important. A lot of the items in the game use power, and the power you have is displayed in a colored bar in the equipment screen that tells you information you need to know, like how long your weapons can fire all at once before they end up running out of energy, what item is using what percentage of power, and so on. This is very helpful, and by very, I mean it is a goddamned must, especially when you jump out into flying and into combat. Now, when it comes to combat and flying, the flight system of the game is something akin to an arcade plus. It's not mimicking every single system, something like Elite does, but allows for turning off dampeners so you can spin by an enemy and shove a missile up its keister or, or take a better aim at an asteroid's scanned materials. Many actions in combat or otherwise run from a radial menu that pops up by hitting a button in your screen, like sector maps, planet maps, and otherwise, including a pause time targeting system that you can bring up to look at where everyone else is in a space battle and then target them. And this can get really busy fast, so it's very useful. The devs suggest many times, in fact, to just run from enemies, and I would agree. As coming into a larger battle is like leaping into an ass-kicking contest where you have one leg and everyone else has like 1,000 asses and seven legs. If there's one thing I noticed, it's that some of the ships and the AI had a tendency to just turn around in front of me and slam into me at slow speeds, especially for some of the larger ships. Hey, maybe it was a last-ditch effort, but that's like tossing a loaded gun at an enemy's face and hoping to knock them out. Normally, I would say they offer an adequate challenge rising up to extremely difficult if they had the goods, and you don't, especially with your shield and armor. Or you faced off against a flight wing as well as a pirate lead ship. That can be very, very difficult. You also have a somewhat detailed NPC system that works through that same comms and radial dial. You can call other characters, you can find out what they're doing, you can even target them from that channel, which helps when things go wrong quickly. You can pay off enemies if you're getting spanked, and even threaten other people to jettison their cargo. Now, when it comes to control, the game does work with gamepad, mouse and keyboard, and throttle and stick combos, but I have to say, without a doubt, gamepad is the best, as the developer actually suggests. They made it for that. I got mouse combat dialed in pretty well, but it never felt as responsive, even adjusting dead zones and sensitivity as I would want. My Thrustmaster worked fine for this, but the way Rebel Galaxy Outlaw works, gamepad felt better, and by the time I tried it, I was more accustomed to that control scheme anyway, but you can pick and choose as you want. When it comes to the combat, if the going does get rough, the rough ask for pals. That's just the way it is. And here, you can do missions, and as you do, you can end up getting some of those characters that you can call to help you. And there's nothing like a space trucker showing up and throwing down with you, especially in some of the harder battles. Surprisingly enough, they aren't bad wingmen as well. I mean, they're not Iceman, who is, besides Val Kilmer. They're more like Goose, doing their job and occasionally warning you that you're about to turn into the world's brightest cloud. But let's say I don't want to turn and burn with the best of them. Let's say I just want to have a sedate, trading, and mining life. You can do that. As with all these games, buying low and selling high is the name of the game, and they can net you insane gains as well, especially mining, once you can buy a mining laser for your ship and if you have the cargo room. I would say for most people, it's absolutely the way to start is you get more money that way quickly. There's a few spots in each of the systems you can fly to, you can scan an asteroid field and take your chances that there are no enemies there. It's also a dynamic system of sorts with you slowly seeming to adjust prices as you trade and various places selling and buying both normal as well as black market items. You can also see a running tally of the last time an item was sold by you or the price it was entered into the galactic market last, which really does help trading. Sadly, just like our favorite old spaceship, sometimes you have to smash the control panel because something just is not working right. Rebel Galaxy does have a few of those. I dislike the saving system completely. I don't like the way it saves, and sometimes it saves prior to a mission, sometimes it seems to save after, and many times it can leave you in a pretty dire strait, especially in the later missions. Also, the radio menu works for some things, but to really find and truly quickly look at cargo and jettison it and so forth, it's a different menu that's not as readily or just easily available. When it comes to longevity, the game does support modding, though at this time there are none out. Lastly, I did have a few bugs, but no crashes, and 1.0's final retail patch actually fixed the bugs that I had. As a package, Outlaw Galaxy is exactly where it needs to be, I think. It's a modernized and, yes, in some ways, generalized mix of Privateer and Freelancer, which in and of itself was a more modernized title of Privateer anyway. And the DNA is undeniable. This thing channels Freelancer so hard you expect Chris Roberts to show up and grift you for a starship. 
as somebody who installs Freelancer all the time on different PCs, I relish the fact of some type of competition there. And that brings us to Fun Factor. I like me some games like this, and thankfully this one turned out to be a blast. Listen, you get to jump into a ship that's a damn tube someone stapled thrusters in a side cockpit to that has all the attractiveness of a lubed up pig jettisoned into space. And then you fly around amazing looking locations and kill people or trade a bunch of items you've stolen or mined. The game is fun for all of that. It's fun to explore. It's fun to mine. And if outfitted right, it's a blast to take down enemies and try to corrupt the trading system by flooding a particular space station with the bones of ancient aliens. The sometimes lack of exactiveness in the controls and just sheer number of them can easily cause confusion, especially at first. And also the lack of VR support, I think for some people will be sad. But I gotta say, looking at the way the game's presented, it doesn't make any sense to make this game really VR. That doesn't fit. Now, as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating system with PC titles getting rent replaced by deep, deep sale. If that's the score I give, this is for sure a buy. 30 bucks, not a bad price. Not every game needs to be Elite or even No Man's Sky. In fact, there's a middle ground there that is a fantastic place for spacers to get their game on. Rebel Galaxy Outlaw offers that through and through. It is a blast to play. And as somebody who installs Freelancer on almost every system I own, this is one of those titles that might make me rethink doing that and actually install this instead. It's going to be one of those titles. We'll have to see how the mod support is. So anyway, that's it for me. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. As always, if you want to subscribe, make sure you click the notification bell because... As we all know, YouTube ain't working the best. And speaking of that, you can always become a patron on the Patreon website. It helps me continue to buy a copy of every single game I get, even if a dev gives me a code and I give that away to people. It really does allow for me to put my hard-earned cash on the line just like yours. You can follow me on Twitter and Twitch and Facebook as well. Everything's in the description. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.